Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my New Jersey Devils franchise mode series right here on NHL 19. And today, the Wheeling and Dealing Devils continue that trend. Of course, in the last episode, we continued to shuffle people around in desperation to have this team be one cohesive unit rather than having the top line or really the top six carry and everybody else struggle along. Whether or not it's due to the goaltending, and again, as far as Spencer Knight over Askarov, we just use Spencer Knight in Carolina. I try not to, you know, reuse a ton of players if I can, so that would be the reason there. I mean, as that's why, of course, early on, I was like, okay, I might trade Gusev, even though he's, you know, new to the Devils. I've used him in series before, but to that point, again, we've already seen a lot of changes. I mean, I didn't expect that Kyle Palmieri would be as disappointing as he's been this year, but he's been absolutely horrific. Blake Coleman, unfortunately, just not quite producing to the same... I mean, well, point-wise, it's okay, but defensively, it's still a bit of a concern. And, of course, we've, you know, moved people mainly, with, you know, mainly within the bottom six in and out of the lineup... Uh, we've given almost every single person in the AHL right now a chance to succeed. I think the more surprising thing, of course, is that Ludwig Persson and Tyler Cutler struggled as much as they did. And that kind of brings me to what this is and you know what this episode's going to be, because we left the last episode looking at the players that were available, mainly the cheaper players that were on the block. Of course, they would be easier to acquire. And when you look at the team right now, really it's looking at one or two defensemen, maybe three at the most, at least one left defenseman, arguably two right defensemen, if we wanted to get rid of Matt Dumba. And we're looking at about three forwards that we want to bring in. And of course, we scrolled through every team. I went back through before recording this and narrowed down the list to the people that I want to acquire for this team. Of course, last episode... We ended up bringing in Darnell Nurse and thinking, oh, maybe he'll be able to turn things around. Not really. Of course, we finally moved on from Moritz Sider. Justin Schultz has been dealt. And now we're looking at dealing Nurse, Butcher, potentially Matt Dumba, although that wouldn't be ideal, I would say. It, it sucks, <laughs> but we are so desperately trying to get all the pieces into the right place so i'm not going to waste any more time here we're going to jump right into this we're going to get right down to business and the first person i want to go after here probably not the name you're expecting but i want to go after jake gardner in detroit now amongst the left-handed defensemen tory krug is perhaps the more ideal option he's also the more expensive option but the problem with Tory Krug is that he has term. He's 32, has four years left on his deal after this season. That's a bit much to commit to, especially when we know that we have some defensemen who, again, if we fail, might be able to take the step up into the lineup and hopefully have things work out for us. I mean, Ekman might be ready as of next year. So for me, I would rather just trade for Jake Gardner, get a decent little return, on that front, uh, depending on who we have to give up here, there might even be a draft pick involved. I mean, Will Butcher, value-wise, it works out, and I really, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, gotta be honest. It, he was looking like one of those guys prior to this year, where it's like, okay, we're we're gonna be okay. You know, two years ago he was great. Last year, okay, it's not as good, and then this year, it's just defensively, it hasn't. It hasn't been great. And you factor in that he's had power play time, and he's... I mean, he's on a better point pace, but not by much. It, it's frustrating. I mean, again, I'm not going to say he's the biggest issue with the team, but I think he's got to go because I, I kind of have a plan of what I want the defense to be. So odds are it's going to be Butcher for Gardner and a little bit extra, which is fine by me. I mean, we get out from underneath that Butcher deal, we'll have money to spend in the upcoming offseason if we need to. Unfortunately, Detroit's third round pick is gone. We'll have to aim for their third round pick next year, and I'll probably add a fourth this year, and we'll see how close that is. I doubt I can get them to retain salary. Will that go through? Yes, it will. So I might have been able to get a little bit more back, but ultimately, I'm good with that. We get Jake Gardner and picks in exchange for Will Butcher. So a rental back. But we get out from underneath that butcher contract. 
Jake Gardner's been pretty damn good this season in Detroit, and hopefully he can continue that here. Now, I know, in a real-life setting, a lot of people are going to be like, you're getting Jake Gardner to shore up the defense, but I'm going to trust it, all right? I'm going to trust it. Something needs to change. Will Butcher's on the way out, and we are not done yet. For the right defenseman, we are going to Boston, and we are going to try and get Charlie McAvoy. Now, I'm going to wait, because there are a couple of forwards I have in mind, and I'm not sure who exactly I want to get. The first guy I know for sure that I want to get, though, is Troy Terry. I'm also looking at Adam Henrique. But in terms of forwards, I'm also looking at the Blues and looking at David Perron. And funny enough, Andre Kopitar, who has been phenomenal for St. Louis, even though I, you know, dumped a ton of cap onto them. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. It's a lot of money to try and take back for Perron and Kopitar, which is why I'm thinking we might not be able to get either of them and we might have, or we might have to get one of them and also settle for Henrique. But with the McAvoy deal as well, it's... It's going to be tough to, to get that to go through, I think. To be honest, it might be for the best to just get Terry and Henrik and then try to get one of the two. Oh, boy. You know what? Let's see if we can get the McAvoy deal done. Let's see if we can get the McAvoy deal done. He's on an expiring contract. I believe he's due. he is due for his first big-time contract, but that is okay. We will have the money to afford it. I mean, Darnell Nurse is going to be gone. Gardner is going to be gone. So we should be okay after that. And then forward-wise, I think the... Yeah, see, the good thing is Persson and Cutler both are not, uh, you know, in danger of me having to spend a ton of money on them. So looking at this team, Pokefist deal is up. Gusev, of course, we don't want to get rid of. I'd ideally like to hold on to Persson and Cutler. So we're going to be looking at guys like Wong and Acton, potentially. Ritu is for sure. I mean, he's he's not even going to be good, but he's for sure someone that we could look to use. So let's see what we could do here. We're going to add Darnell Nurse, of course. And we got a decent amount of money that we have to make up. And the Bruins don't have free contract spots either. So that's a bit worrisome. We're going to add Palmieri. We're going to add Ritu. We're going to add... Let's add Blackburn as well. I'm going to have to add some no-value contracts back if they even have enough. So Pavel Shen is there, Seneshin, and Ryan Carpenter. That's pretty much perfect. How close are we to a deal? Well! You, you, you sure? <laughs> I was about to add a first-round pick. Charlie McAvoy's the devil. The Bruins just gave him up for absolutely nothing. I mean, I guess value-wise we hit the mark. We really didn't give up anybody that I, I'm i upset to see go. Really? That's that's all it took, huh? That's all it took. Okay, you know what? Because some people are going to question this. We're, we're talking, right? Straight line, straight line, nothing. I will keep talking to prove my point that there have been no jumps. There have been no edits. It is still... On hard trade difficulty, what the hell just happened? I mean, I know those those low elite guys with the low overalls had decent value. Nurse had decent value as well. I mean, I guess it adds up. I mean, I, I almost feel bad. Almost. Except I, my desire to win is is more than than the you know the the shame of robbing them. <laughs> I'll take it. So Darnell Nurse is gone. They immediately want to flip him. Darnell Nurse is gone. Palmieri's gone. Ritu's gone. Blackburn's gone. I mean, sure. Hopefully that doesn't screw me out of another deal, potentially. And now we'll go talk to Anaheim. What are we looking at cap-wise? Still about $4 million. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get Piranha or Kopitar. It's going to be tough. But the two guys I want from Anaheim are Troy Terry and Adam Henrique. Money-wise, we're looking okay. It's just value-wise, can we pull off this trade? Defensively, I mean, you can kind of see now that the defense is taking shape. I really don't want to get rid of Martinic right now. And indeed, Xavier Bernard's a part of my plans for the rest of the season. So forward-wise, what do we have here? 
Wong, Acton. We're going to use Debilowicz. We're going to use Sororkins. We're going to use Cardwell. And let's see how close we are with that. Wow, they will take that outright. Huh. What if I take out Cardwell? Okay, so... Dubilowix, Rorkins, and Cardwell, all low elites. You know, I, I'm desperate. Screw it. I'm desperate. We're doing it. If that'll go through, we're doing it. Troy Terry and Adam Henrique, or especially for Adam Henrique, welcome back to New Jersey. And this team has certainly taken shape much, much sooner than I expected. Now the question is... Do I have the money for Perron or Kopitar? I don't really want to flip Henrique back, but getting one of them would be nice. Both of them would be even better because they both had really good seasons. I mean, money-wise, I just think this is going to be impossible. I just don't see how this is going to work unless I got them to retain salary on both of them, which seems very, very unlikely. But let's just keep scrolling here with Andre Kopitar. And we'll see what happens. I cannot believe how relatively cheap both of those deals were. So if you retain on Kopitar, we are like right up against it. So let's see, who else do I have that I want to get rid of? I'm digging the defense right now. I like where we're at there. Forward-wise, I know Coleman is on the chopping block. Persson and Cutler are fine. Coleman's on the block. Gates, Wong, Acton, Barrett. We're pretty much good. Aside from that, yeah, we're pretty much good. Unless we wanted to throw in like a Robertson or a Bjorkstrand, just someone who might have a little bit of value. Say we throw in Robertson, we would be over the cap. It would have to be one or the other. We do need one. So, again, Kopitar has 54 points and a plus 11. Perron has 45 points and a plus 11. They've both been pretty damn good. I gotta be honest. I think I want to try to bring back Kopitar. <laughs> Go figure. I'm like, hey, can I have Kopitar back, please? After flipping him and wheeling and dealing him to get Godfrey. So, is there anybody else? Say I use Rippin, say I use... Bjorkstrand. I kind of want to keep Breland because of how bad of a pick that was. Is there anybody else I can throw into this deal just to make me feel a little bit better about it? Let's use Robertson. Alright, cool. We can afford to do that. So that'll more than likely go through. It's questionable as to whether or not the Blues want to retain salary. So I am going to uh, just safety net this a little bit and we're going to see what they think. There you go. So you get a bunch of prospects. People who are really on board with fair trades aren't liking what I'm doing right now. But you know what? God damn it. If this team still fails, I'm out of ideas. So defensively, those are the six that we are rolling with. Spurgeon and Martinek, Walsh as well. There in case of injury. And you know what? We're actually going to call up Walsh. More than likely if I can. That would put us over the limit. Forward-wise... We have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So Carpenter and Seneshin need to go down. Walsh will be called up. And I would be over the cap. I guess because of Walsh's deal. Can I just send them two down? Oh, God. All right, we're, we're not quite in cap hell, but we're kind of in cap hell. Like, the game views us as being in cap hell, even though we're not. So that's always fun. Uh, is there going to be anything I can do in terms of calling up defensemen to make this okay? Can I call up Martinek? No, I cannot. Can I call up... Oh, God. We might just have to leave this. <laughs> We might just have to leave this. We are in faux cap hell right now, and it sucks. I might have to make another, you know, I'm probably going to have to make another move here or two uh, just to make sure I still have the freedom to call up and send down whoever I want. So let's see what we're dealing with. So amongst defensemen, ideally I'd actually bring in another defenseman or two in a deal here because we're kind of hurting in terms of depth. 
So forward wise, we have a lot of people signed. A lot of people. So if I can flip Carpenter, if I can flip Senishin, oh God, you know, Bedini had his chance. I just don't think he's going to make it here. If I can flip anybody else, I don't really think anybody else is going to work here. So, actually, for St. Louis, because I, I kind of feel bad. You know what, they're finally out of cap hell. Is there another team where this will work? The Leafs. Do you have a defenseman that I can take back here? Like a no-value defenseman that you want to give up. Hoffenmeyer. Perfect. Will that go through? Thank you. Just, just, I know I could have added picks. I don't care. Just get those guys off of my team, please. We have $2 million in cap space now, apparently. Can I send down Hoffenmeyer? Nope, we're apparently over the cap by sending somebody down. We have uh, we have officially broken it. <laughs> but hey, we have a depth defenseman on the roster now, so that's good. That was the that was the game plan. Yeah, we have we have broken this. Unless I can get rid of like Hillis. Let me see if I can get rid of Hillis and that might fix it. <laughs> Just because he's one of the few that actually has uh, a contract despite being in the minors. You know, a contract that's over minimum. So is there a team? Uh, Buffalo Soldier. Treadlock Rasta. Uh, will you go coming to America? Will you go for a fourth rounder? There we go. Yeah, you, you made out like gangbusters. You sure did. Just give me a fourth rounder. Okay, so I think I think we're okay. Spears is our healthy scratch. And then defensively, we can at least use Hoffenmeyer over Walsh. I'm fine with that. So hey, we at least have proper depth at this point for the NHL level. So the AHL, let's go best lines. Let me just make sure that Schmelzer isn't taking the spot of one of our dudes. He is not. Sandlack wasn't ours, although there might have been one other guy. There was not. All right, cool. So the AHL is set defensively, with the exception of Melchiori, who needs to sit for Alf Edler. And the goaltending, straightforward with Jones and Heater. So the NHL... Here's what we're looking like, because obviously Spears is going to sit for Evan Barrett. And, God, how exactly are we going to do this? I still think I want Bratt on that top line with Hisher and Hall. The second line is the questionable one. We can keep Bokvist there, or we could go... You know, I think we're going to keep Bokvist there for now. And then that third line is pretty ridiculous. Henry, Kopitar, Terry, and then a fourth line of uh, Barrett, Gates, or Gates, Barrett, and Zetterland. I'm, feel, I'm feeling all right about that. That third line's solid. Some good veteran help. Troy Terry's having a really good season. We'll see if they mesh well together. As, go figure, Andre Kopitar ends up back on this team. And then defensively is where it gets a little bit interesting because that right side is absolutely stacked. Absolutely stacked. So we're going to leave Smith with Godfrey. And then I think what we're going to do is have Bernard with McAvoy and then Gardner with Dumba. I think that's the best way to do it. So it's kind of... And we could change up player types here if we really wanted to. And obviously it would be Smith defensive, Godfrey offensive, Bernard defensive, McAvoy offensive. And then that third pairing, it would probably, I mean, probably just leave them both those two ways and hope for the best, I think is how that would go. And then, yeah, offensively, I'm feeling okay about it. So when it comes to the goaltending, they are 100% out of excuses. Flat out, there is a the curse of Marty Brodeur is haunting this team if we still struggle. I'd like to think that's not going to be the case. Let me sim past deadline day. We'll take a look around the league. We're still in a pretty damn good spot. It's tough to say that our team isn't necessarily stronger. I mean, we got rid of a lot of guys who are underperforming. We get Charlie McAvoy for much, much less than I thought it would take. 
Overall, I'm pretty happy about this. It sucks to see guys like Coleman go. I still like, I, you know, I wanted Nurse for a reason. I wanted to keep Palmieri. Will Butcher was tiny Van Allen. Oh my God. Will Butcher was absolutely a part of the plans. Until he wasn't, it can change that quickly. As there were quite a few moves made. I think Boston moved Nick Ritchie twice, didn't they? Pretty sure they did. Quite a few moves made. Now, in terms of strategies, that's something else that was brought up in the comments section of the last episode. And I want to say this about strats. Although, I guess I, I hit the wrong one, so who's... Who's the leadership group? Dumba, you are not a leader. How dare you? How dare you? Oh, boy. We don't even really have a leader on defense. <laughs> okay. Clearly, Adam Henrique has to be the captain now. I don't make the rules. That's just kind of how it works. When it comes to the strategies, here's my theory. I still... Oh, my God. Did you just see the menu lag there? That was tremendous. I don't think they do anything. And I feel justified in having that opinion because of how much of an emphasis has been made, you know, with NHL 20 on having strategies matter by kind of infusing their importance next to coaches. I really don't think they do anything for the sim. If it helps make anybody feel better, uh, we can absolutely, you know, mess around with this a bit, although... I mean, really, they're they're fine. Like, there's really not much to change here outside of, I guess, forward line we'd put on overload. Yeah, we'd probably want efficiency. <laughs> Block the shot if you're there. Like I said, there's really, there's really not too much to change with this. I have to be honest. But... You know, we're just going to go overload on every line because it makes sense to, because they're pretty damn good offensively, that being every line. But, yeah, that's just kind of my opinion on strats, is I just I don't feel like they do anything from a simming perspective, which is why there's such an emphasis on it when it comes to NHL 20. Could be wrong on that, but I always feel as though it just it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. But, again, that's just from my own experiences. There are some people, as Ty Smith gets hurt, there are some people who live and die and swear that strategies work for them within franchise, and that's fine. I'm not saying that they don't. I can't confirm nor deny, but in my experiences, I just I never really feel like they do anything, even when I put time into uh, you know making sure it's fine. Hoffenmeyer did well next to Godfrey. Now, you could also say, like, oh, well, of course, Hoffenmeyer did well next to Godfrey. Look who he's playing next to, but, you know... You can put you can put people next to talented players. It doesn't always work out. So, although we have appeared to have finally fixed Jesper Bratt, it's just by getting top line time, which was not a part of the plan. As the plus minus for Henrik, I think the plus minus technically for all those guys has gotten better. Hey, the numbers are looking better. That's all I know right now. Xavier Bernard still doesn't. He can't put up a point, but God damn it, I love him. Shut down defenseman extraordinaire. Matt Dumba still a minus two. What's the goaltending looking like? Ooh. <laughs> no matter who we've had in goal thus far in this series, it's been rough as we have allowed 11 goals in two games. Make that 14 goals in three games. Make that 20 goals in four games. You want to go for another 20? What the hell? <laughs> We'll go best lines down in the AHL. We snap that four-game skid against the Rangers. We also beat the Habs in the follow-up for our 40th win of the season before getting crushed by the Islanders. Ugh. <laughs> it's just... Ugh, it's frustrating. Where are we in the standings? Currently in third. Our chance of keeping pace with the Hurricanes is now out the door. We could finish as high as second. We could technically finish outside of the playoffs. Our playoff spot is hardly guaranteed at this stage. Goaltending wise. Oh my god. Like what what do we do? What do we do? Like Bill Heatley is the best goalie within our organization right now. <laughs> 
Bill Heatley and Jan Bednar have been our top two goaltenders. Okay. Here's here's the thing. Here's 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 the thing. I I'm I know it's crazy, but I kind of want to see how Heatley will do behind an NHL defense. If this costs us a playoff spot, it's on me. But I can send down Askarov if it will let me. Please let me call up the heater. No, I'm not over the cap, I swear. God damn it, I knew I shouldn't have fiddled around with it. We're stuck with Askarov unless I were to send down like Kopitar, which isn't going to happen. So here, let me let me try this really quickly. Can I send down Spears? Can I send down Hoffenmeyer? And can I send down Askarov but call up Heatley? God damn it, game. You're so broken sometimes. All right, well, never mind with that idea. We are tethered to Askarov for better or worse. Dude, the menu lag today. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. My God. I went to edit lines. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's get this regular season over with. We'll see what kind of nightmare we're living. If we miss the playoffs... That's horrific. But let's not think that way, right? Right. We still have a long way to go as we lose to the Blues. We lose to the Hurricanes for the third time this month. And then Boakvist goes down to a mild concussion as we beat the Rangers. So yeah, if we wanted a chance to uh, you know, catch up and keep up, oh my sweet God, with the Hurricanes. Uh, losing three games against them in the same month. So it turns out was not the best way to do that. Blake Spears does very well when he plays on a higher line, as we have discovered. We shall continue onward here. After a 7-3 win against the Habs, can we beat Philadelphia in the final game of March? We can. So we have four games left. We're on 44 wins. Currently in second place in the division. The Hurricanes have already clinched the top record in the conference. So as long as we don't completely choke, we'll be a playoff team. It would be, it'd be pretty bad, especially after just beating Philly to then miss out. That was a crucial and clutch win. We could still miss out, though, so now's not the time to absolutely choke. We beat Columbus. That should see us through. Two points clear of the Islanders with three games left. We really do need to beat Chicago here as well. They've only won two games out of their last eight. So that should be achievable. Hoffenmeyer, hey, doing well. As long as you, I don't care if you put up points. Just don't allow goals at an alarming rate. And thankfully, he has not. Did we beat Chicago? We didn't. We clinched the playoff spot, though. Thanks to other people choking, now it's just a matter of seeding. We play Minnesota and Philadelphia. The Flyers battling for their playoff lives. We're battling for home ice over the Islanders right now. Can we beat the Wild? Yes, we can. 7-1. to one. Unfortunately, the Islanders also won. So we need to crush the hopes and dreams of the Philadelphia Flyers and hope that the New York Islanders choke... So that we end up with home ice in our first round series. Will that be the case? No, it will not. No, it will not be the case. The Flyers still missed out, but they at least ruined my day. As we will be heading to Brooklyn, Nassau, Belmont, Barclays, Coliseum Center in the first round. Overall, a decent season. 96 points, nothing to scoff at. It could have gone a little bit better. Hell of a lot more wheeling and dealing to get us to this point. I don't know if we would have made it to this point if we kept the original team together. Who's to say? In the Atlantic, Tampa, Buffalo, Toronto, and Detroit made it. In the Central, Colorado, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Minnesota. Man, St. Louis still made it. Jesus. And in the Pacific, Vancouver, Anaheim, and Calgary. So we finished the year as a top 10 team, 
got that going for us. Columbus was just horrific. Absolutely horrific. Goals for per game. We were top five with three, five, four goals for per game. Goals against, though, at a three, four, six, which was, it was up there. It was mid table. Not ideal. Power play, 28.6%, third best power play in the league. Our penalty kill at 70.2%. The worst penalty kill in the league. We'll be addressing that before the playoffs. Yikes. Okay. We also had a losing home record. <laughs> so maybe home ice, you know, not having home ice is for the best, as it turns out. In terms of the leading scorers, at least for those that remained on the team, Taylor Hall, 96 points, Hughes over point a game, Hisher, well over point a game, Gusev hit point a game, Bratt finished with 78 points in 82 games. Gusev a minus one, Hughes just a plus one. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. That second line ended up being the line that still had goals scored against them. Kopitar finished with 72 points, Bokus with 57, but that minus 15, so I think that second line might have to be broken up. The third line also took some damage in the latter half of the season in terms of plus-minus, but Terry and Henrique both finished with 40 points, or 41 for Terry. Gates with 25 points and a minus three, 16 points for Zetterland and a minus four. So the bottom six still just didn't quite gel. It's no matter what the hell we do, this game just like, nope, your top line will be fine, but everyone else is taking a hit in terms of plus-minus. Just deal with it. It's kind of how it works, I guess. So maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of room for maneuverability here. I mean Barrett is one hell of a goal scorer. Gates is fine. I suppose I mean the arguments there, if we really wanted to, in terms of going down to the AHL and, you know, calling up Cutler, who did very well in terms of point total, as did Persan for that matter. You know, maybe we just wait until next year for them. But there, there's options that we have. Defensively, McAvoy finished with 61 points and a minus 2. Godfrey, 59 points. Dumba finished as a minus 5. Gardner's plus minus dropped a bit. Ty Smith had one of his better seasons. And Xavier Bernard, still a big fan. Goaltending-wise, though, ugh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. No matter what the hell we do, man. No matter what the hell we do, the curse of Martin Brodeur. That's all it can be called. Johnny Gaudreau, Alex Holtz, Connor McDavid, uh, Keegan Valesi, Steven Stamkos, Patrick Laine, and Jordan Eberle all hit at least 100 points. There were quite a few 90-point guys as well, including Tyler Benson. Goal scoring-wise, McDavid hit 72. Jesus. Lundell was 69, Holtz with 58, Valesi 53, Kaprizov 51, Hall and Ovechkin each hit 50. The assist king was Johnny Goudreau. Plus minus king for the hell of it, Johnny Goudreau. Amongst the defensemen, you had Kale McCarr, point a game. Krug was up there, Yossi, Hamilton, Brant, Clark for the Washington Capitals. And then defense, or uh, goaltending, I should say. The winningest, Shogard and Hellebuck. We'll go with Shogard, considering it was in less games. Top save percentage, uh, well, Braden Holpe off of the glitch, which has been fixed for 20. But my God, does that suck that that glitch was in the entire year. So who knows what his save percentage would have been. Top rookie, Edward Baumgartner. The bomb, fourth overall pick for Tampa this past year, beat Niebeck, Nybeck, and Jeremy Wilmer, who both had really good seasons. So that brings this year to a close. Let me know what you think we should do, if anything. Oh, my sweet Christ, EA. Let me know what you think we should do, if anything, when it comes to the lineup. Do we just chalk up the, you know, the, the minuses, you know, the trend over the last month due to poor goaltending? Again, uh, in terms of my ability to call up or send down anybody, I think technically we might have to sacrifice Kopitar, <laughs> potentially. 
but th- there are moves there are moves that could be made if need be. We'll figure that out though. I'll leave it up to you. And of course, we'll potentially look to just change up uh, you know, like if Hisher's gonna if Hisher's gonna play center, we'll change that and then you know, especially look at the penalty kill to fix that up. So we know it's gonna be the Islanders. Again, we're going to the Barclays, Nassau, Coliseum, Belmont, Demodome. And we'll see what happens. We're back in the playoffs. Still not as optimistic as we should be, though, with the team, you know, the caliber of team that we have.